Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory. And I, you can already tell I don't been preached happy on here. Praise God. Now, I mean, Bishop Butler just been ringing my bell, man. And we're going to we're going to we're going to ring it again today. Father, we thank you so much for your word and for your great grace that is upon us all. And we just give you praise and honor, sir. We open our hearts and minds to you and we praise you. Glory to God. Somebody just got you, you, somebody right in the middle of a heart attack right now and you are healed. In the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, take your healing, take your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you right now. And that's for anybody that's got any kind of heart problem, any kind of new hearts are being ministered to people by the grace of God right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, go to kcm.org slash notes right now. Download your, your outlines and so forth of the broadcast today. And uh, all the scriptures will be there. All the, that, that word from the Lord will be there word for word. Mm. Amen. Mm. So uh, it's good. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Bishop, get us back in this thing quick. Well, let's go to Romans chapter five this time. Yes, sir. Praise God. And we have already established, if you watched the first several days, we found seven different, 17 different definitions for grace. Graciousness, thanksgiving, acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, joy, liberality, pleasure, thankfulness, assistance from God, the anointing, praise God, the manifest measure of the Holy Spirit, bring about fruits and gifts of the Spirit, results of the Holy Spirit, the work of God, praise God, and thankfulness. Mm. And all of that is from the one Greek word. Now, Praise God. Ephesians chapter five, verse 17. The Lord, the Holy Spirit kind of dealt with me. He wanted me to go over here. And then with that word of the Lord you just have, I can see why. It says in verse 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned or ruled by one, much more or whatever we're about to read is far more powerful than the death that came through Adam. They which receive, which means they accept, Abundance of grace. Greek <clears throat> word there means superabundance of grace. And we've established that all the 17 definitions really come down to what? The grace of God is actually the power of God. It's the manifestation of the anointing itself is what it is. Those who res- will accept abundance or superabundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, which now tells you right there then that grace and righteousness are not the same thing. Yeah. And righteousness is going to be a result of grace. And you know but, what? Uh, it, I, I, just, I just saw God's accentuation on gift. Hmm. Right. The gift of righteousness. Grace qualified me to get the gift. Right. Yeah. And that's why we are saved by grace, not saved by faith. We are saved by grace through Through faith. faith. It is by faith so that it might be by grace. Exactly. Praise God. Amen. So he says, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign or rule in life by one Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, right? So a person has to receive, and note what it says. See, the word abundance is a quali- qualifier. If you can receive abundance of grace, you can receive less than abundance Oh, of grace. yeah, sure. Okay? Yeah. Or you can receive great grace. Okay, but, it, and, and you know, in that when we were talking yesterday about Acts chapter 4, okay, about great grace, yeah. and what caused great grace to come, Well, they prayed the word. They prayed in faith. They asked God for a map of grace. 
miracles, so forth, so on. Praise God. They were in one accord. And you had a move of great grace and they were willing to receive it. I mean, the spirit of God, when it was saying to somebody, give up, give that land away. Uh, give that house away or whatever it was he told them. They had to receive that. They could have went, mm -mm. Uh, no, I'm, not. I'm willing to give part of this, but uh, I mean, they had to make a, a decision to accept the word of grace. The scripture, where, where it says that the, uh, I believe it was Acts chapter 20, I think it is, verse 32. I said, it, the word of God is called the word of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were willing to receive or accept the word of grace. And because they were willing to receive the word of grace, they could have abundance of it. So here, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness can rule in life by one Jesus Christ. You have to be willing to receive. And receiving it means acting on what's told you by the spirit of grace, the Holy Ghost himself. So if a person... And a lot of times people are, they, they want to see something happen, but you're not going to see something happen until you receive that word of grace. And if you'll receive it by faith, mm -hmm. however much degree of that word you'll believe, you can have a abundant manifestation. Keith, I, the, the Lord uh, opened my eyes to this years ago. Right, right here, he says that Righteousness has, through one man's disobedience, death came. Mm -hmm. Through one man's obedience was Jesus. Righteousness has come upon all men. So, the, and the Lord showed it to me. It looked like a low hanging cloud everywhere over all men. Just close as your breath. Just right there all the time. But when somebody received it, it looked like a lightning bolt. <laughs> Man, it just uh, right down into your spirit. It was hanging there all the time. And it's there for everybody. Everybody throughout the whole planet is there. But when you receive it, man, the power of it hit your spirit, man, kill that old spirit, man, dead, and the new creature emerged on the inside by the glory and the grace of God. Ah, and you know, in Hebrews 2, 9, through the grace of God, Jesus tasted death for all men. It's just hanging there right in that same cloud. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, that lightning bolt come out of that cloud. That's what I want to talk about, was that right there. Because what happened, every single believer, every, every single person watching this broadcast who was born again has received at least once an operation of superabundant of grace. Absolutely. When? when? Absolutely. When you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, what happened? Grace, the power of God itself, praise God, recreated you. Isn't that just... You went from death to life. It took out the death, mm -hmm. praise God. Killed the old man. Kill that old man. And recreated you to a new species of being that never before existed. And you received Jesus, so you received his grace. He's covered over with it. And everything he is. That's right. That's what happened. So, oh, so when people go, you know, well, I don't know if I can receive. You've already done it. You've you already done it. Done. You have received, received it to such an extent that you are no longer the same and heaven is yours and everything that God offers is yours. Praise God. No wonder you, should, you can reign. So if you can receive it, praise God, to, to be born again, you can receive it for healing of your heart. Let me tell you another scripture. It just popped up in me right just as you said that. This is the victory, 1 John 5, mm. this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
Nothing in the world order that faith won't overcome. But what does the overcoming? The grace. The grace. It, Romans 4, 16 again. It is by faith so that it might be by grace. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, even, even during Hebrews 4, 16, when he talked about uh, come boldly to the throne or the decision place of grace, that you may obtain mercy and find grace, and it tells you what grace does, helps you. Oh, yeah, in a, to, yeah. to help in a time of need. Right. It helps you right at whatever place. So if you decide to receive, you need help right now, receive the grace. And grace, of course, one of the definitions, 17, uh, 17 definitions, one of the definitions of grace is gift. You don't have to do anything except believe what he said. And that's for somebody, right? Yeah, yeah praise God. Someone's also had a, a mental pressure and disease. And there's a thing right behind, right here on the top of your neck. There's a pressure, almost like it's a, it's almost like it's a boil mm. that, that mm. here on the back of the neck, praise God. And you've tried everything to kind of get rid of this thing to, to help you with it. All you got to do right now, just say, I receive it. I receive it. Praise God. Disappear right now. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All kind of brain diseases right now. All kind yes, of sir. mental issues in the name of Jesus. The grace of God is now made available. Just say, yeah, I received that. I accept that. Yeah, Praise God. Amen. Your memory will come totally it. sharp. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Just take it. Grace Hallelujah. is available. You don't have to do Hallelujah. anything for that except receive. Someone, Keith, in really, really, really bad need of, of teeth, abscessed teeth all all in your mouth. I, and I saw it, I, I, I literally saw it in the spirit that God just put a whole mouthful of new teeth in that. Just, just the whole mouthful, just in the name of Jesus. Mm. Amen. Mm. Glory, Glory to God. God. Now somebody said, well, I don't believe that. Well, you won't be bothered with it. But the person that takes it by faith, the grace of God is there to do it. Praise God. Right now. Amen. Yeah. Let's translate this like, like you did with Christ in the anointing years ago. Oh, yeah. Let, let's, since we now know what grace is a little better, let's translate this. Praise God. Much more they which accept full measure of the power, mm -hmm. full measure of the anointing, praise God, and of accept the gift of their position in Christ, right standing praise God. God, shall rule, reign, praise God, in this life by Jesus, the anointed one. Praise God. Yes, So sir. anytime I see grace of God, in the script, because I understand that it's 17 different things. I understand the, where it goes. But overarching thing of it is that grace is really power. That's what Paul was talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. It's really talking about power. And, and people, people have gotten it to, to uh, using that word to mean I can go do anything I want to do and, and don't matter and all kind of stuff. And they just kind of just took it way away from actually what he was talking about. Okay, the grace of God is the power of God, the anointing of God. Jesus was covered well, he said, his assistance He help. said, I labored more than them all, yet not me. It was the grace of God with me. Now that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, all things are possible mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. So that, that you can see that that just comes right there together, who you with. Well, I'm with God. What are yeah. you doing? I'm walking in His grace. Yeah. I'm walking in His power. Praise God. All sufficient, all the time. But it's got to be received. And that to the extent received. you're willing to receive it would be the extent you have it That's manifested. It. Just comes down to that. That's it. Praise God. Well, you, what do, now, of course, receiving something has a lot to do with what your mind has been renewed to. Dad Hagen used to say, right believing brought us to right speaking to right action. Oh, yeah. Right believing comes from meditating the word. So sure, if you're trying to work it up, you know, trying to trying to get it. Well, no, all you got to do is 
begin to learn some more about the Father. What does 2 Peter 1, 2 says? Grace and peace is multiplied through two things, the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Well, you find out who God is, what his character is, what he thinks about you and all that. The more you find out about the Father, sure, praise God, what starts to happen, it becomes easier and easier to receive. Well, it, it, it rises like a tide. Exactly. Um, you remember when, when the, apostle, the Apostle Paul said, stir up the gift that's within you. Mm. You've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's in there. Glory to God. And when you start doing what you're told me, you start meditating the Word on this. I, I went through my New Testament, underlined grace in red everywhere I found it. Mm -hmm. Well, that just your eyes will just just fall on that. Mm -hmm. Now, now that you're you have to take your outline there, and you've got these definitions for it and so forth. Now start meditating on these. And when you do that, the tide starts rising. What's happening? Faith coming. Faith mm -hmm. cometh by hearing. Mm -hmm. Faith cometh by hearing. Mm -hmm. And the hearing cometh by the Word of God, mm -hmm. by faith. And it comes, what's that? By faith. It is by faith, so it might be by grace. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, what's happening, faith is rising and opening the door to that grace. It's opening the door for revelation of it. And that's the reason I'm so excited right now. I can get up and run around this table because it just, I'm stirred. Well, God, stir me up. That ain't what he said. He said, you stir yourself up. Stir up the gift of God that's in you right now. Stir yourself up. How you do it? Meditate these scriptures. I Somebody have, is yeah, facing a yeah. serious lawsuit. Uh -huh. And if you will get that lawsuit off yeah. your mind, like God told Joshua, quit thinking about that. You stay, you fix your mind on me. You meditate my word day and night and you will observe to do all that's written therein. And the power of grace to overcome everything they've accused you of is there right now. Praise God by his power and by his strength. If you don't do that, you're going to be destroyed. And remember that grace is a gift to you. And so, praise God, God has fixed it so that it's not going to be you or your lawyer that That's gets it. it done. It's going to be a free gift to you from who he is. He is love. Yes, amen. The more, that's why 2 Peter 1, 2, I believe it is, says the more you learn about God, the mm -hmm. more grace is multiplied. The more you know, learn about Jesus, the more grace is multiplied. It's not that there's, you know, more grace poured out of heaven. What it is is that you pull it down yeah. or receive it more. Yeah. Praise God. Just the more you understand who he is. Your You're faith, not fighting that fight by yourself. Your faith takes hold of it and begins to grow and feel. Now, this is to the person I was just talking about. This is for everybody. You're going to have to forgive those people. Because, see, you're going to have to be towards them the way God is towards you, and that's grace. Right. You, you're going to have to. You're going, you're going to have to say, "Well, I find no fault in them." Ah, how can I do that? <laughs> well, you go on and get your get your brains kicked in because you you fallen in the trap the trap of the devil, which is accusing and 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 holding against people and all that. You, but you, when you forgive, here comes the grace, glory to God, and that protection and that, that power that's involved in it. Why? Because God is fighting your fight. Whew. Something else about it. Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Of course, and he said, God forbid. There is the, uh, the power of grace praise God, that was continuing to work when people miss it, mm. it'll get attached with mercy. Now, mercy, of course, is different than justice or ju judgment, perhaps, or, or justice. I mean, because we know justice when you get what's coming to you. And we know uh, uh, mercy is when even though you are guilty and you should get hammered, somebody gives you a pass. Yeah. Okay. Well, praise God continuing in sin that grace may abound tells us what grace will do. Sometimes 
people get to the place where they just think they can continue to do whatever, whatever, and there's no, there's no problems that, that, that can result from it. But we do have to come to the place where we go, Lord, I recognize. Yeah. I recognize I'm out of so, so, so I'm just coming back to you, praise God. Oh, yeah. And repent of that deal. And, oh, and yes. believe what he says about it. If, if you've repented of whatever sometimes opened the door to you to get in there, God's completely forgot about it. In fact, he might say, what? what oh, doing? yeah. I've had him do me like that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Glory yeah, to yeah, God. Sure. Amen. He's, he is grace himself. I remember Creflo saying this. It really, it, it, it really shined the light where it needed to be shined. He said, sin won't unravel your salvation, but it sure will unravel your life because the wages of sin is still death. Uh -huh. I mean, to be carnally minded is, is death. Uh -huh. And you get to thinking like that and, and not that, well, you know, God's forgiven me and all that. Well, I'm going to tell you something, darling. The, the outcome of that, you open the door to sickness, you open the door to the curse, you just, and you give, the, give place to the devil and what he does. Yeah, the scripture says, give him no place. Uh -huh. Jesus said, he's found nothing in me. Well, you can repent and, and lay hold of the blood of Jesus and he did find nothing in you, but you're going to have to do it. And you have, you have to walk by faith so that it might be by grace. Hallelujah. We are out of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason you need to get these books and just get in there and just, just waller around in it, man. Get all the details and so forth. Brother Keith and I will be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.